Welcome in everyone to another edition of the Coach Shinnick Show. This is Pete Shinnick, football coach at the University of West Florida. I'm Will Kennedy, and we're back with you for another December edition of the Coach Shinnick Show. Coming off a big win in the NCAA Regional Final Division II playoffs over Wingate. 45-14 was the final. Congrats on that Thank first, you. Coach. And, and what a day it was right here on this field behind us here, Penn Air Field. More than 4,000 fans. I think it was 78 degrees at kickoff. <laughs> Not a bad advertisement for Florida. No, fantastic day. I uh, love the support that we got. Uh, our fans came out. I mean, great crowd for a third round playoff game. Could not be happier with that. And then the weather was just fantastic. And so uh, to be able to show up, see those type of uh, people in the stands and then to have that type of weather, uh, fired up for our guys to be able to play at home and get that opportunity. And, you know, excited to be able to play a, a team that we've played before and, you know, we know them well. And as we stated last week, you know, I, we've coached against them a handful of times. Uh, so, you know, game started the way we kind of thought it would kind of both sides getting a feel for who you know who they're going against what it looks like uh, but obviously very pleased with how it ended and we'll let everybody know right before we dive into the highlights it will be at Ferris State this mm -hmm. week Saturday on the 10th it'll be a noon Eastern time kick so 11 back here yep. in Pensacola and Argo Nation wherever you are we'll have you covered on that one but let's let's get into this football game one of the stranger ones that I've ever been involved in and we'll start in the first quarter in which your offense Gets the ball twice, it doesn't come up with points. They get it one time, go 90 yards, and it looks like, wait, wait a second. Right. They're pretty good. They're moving the football down. It's tough to drive the field, and to, to do what they did on that first possession was impressive. Yeah, it really was. And kind of what we thought, and really, you know, if you go back and look at um, kind of everybody we've played, you know, everybody kind of throws the kitchen sink at us early. And so we had, we had a missed opportunity early on offense that we didn't take advantage of um, and could have converted and gotten a first down. Uh, and then they get the ball and really do some things. We had a pass interference call that, you know, we'd obviously love to have back. Uh, so things didn't necessarily go the way we wanted, but as you're watching it, it's like, okay, we, we just need to calm down a little bit. We just need to get done what we're capable of doing. And that was kind of my feeling through the first quarter. Going into the second quarter, I felt like we were ready for something to happen. Uh, and that's really kind of how it played out. Got it going in the second quarter after Tramel Jones has scored for them. You get a nice hookup. David Durden runs a great route. Pee Wee finds him. It's almost tough as a quarterback when a guy's that wide open. <laughs> a little pressure. Like, I got to put it on him, and he did. No, he did. Great ball. Um, they actually blitzed the corner off the edge, so our offensive line did a great job picking it up. Pee Wee ends up right as he's throwing, getting somebody coming free, but is able to hit David in stride. Um, David actually made the guy fall down who was covering him because there had to be a little bit of fear going, oh my goodness, 17's coming at me. Uh, so great route, great throw. And, you know, tie the game up. And that's, you know, we felt like there was going to be that opportunity for big plays for our offense. Uh, just needed to be patient and try to get them. Your defense then decides, Let, let's, let's crank this thing up a little bit and start forcing some turnovers. <laughs> you know, get a fumble and then, you know, a missed field goal. Right. and. But get it back again, get a field goal from Griff Sarah, who, by the way, if you haven't seen the stories, I mean, he's battling through mm. some things, and uh, kudos to that young man. And and then you get, you know, some, your defense says, Let, let's start scoring a little bit. And they, <laughs> and they do, and it's Anthony Johnson Jr. again. Well, you couldn't ask for really, uh, I mean, a more amazing way to end the half and then a more, you know, how to start the half. But uh, we get the field goal up 10-7, and it's like, okay, we just need to get the ball back. I think our offense has settled down a little bit. We get the ball back. I'm confident that we're going to score. And then Anthony Johnson Jr. <laughs> takes the pick six. And really, if you watch that play, for sure we're doing it right now, we set up a great wall for him. He gets to the outside, makes one guy miss on the goal line, which he reminded me of. You know, Good hesitation. I, I, I did right. make it. I did Was make that a guy. coach? Yeah, exactly. Uh, he got it done for us. And, you know, and then it's like, okay, boom, 17, 17, 10. And I'm sitting there, you know, like we have done. Okay, it's like, okay, when do I call timeout? You know, our defense is going to get a stop. They got a first down, so I was kind of holding what's going to take place. And I was like, all right, if they throw the ball, it's incomplete. We're in great shape. You know, then we don't have to use a timeout. And then sure enough, we get the interception. And it's like, oh, my gosh, we're right there. We're, we're exactly where we want to be. Another INT, you get the football back, and, and then it becomes a little bit of a clock game. <laughs> you get a pass interference call in this last possession of the first half that puts you down at the five-yard line. But there's 4.9 seconds left. And it's kind of a decision. Do we kick the field goal with this last play? We have time to run one and then maybe kick a field goal. You kept the timeout in your pocket through, yep. through something. Through uh, the penalty, call. Yeah. taken off and gotten back, yeah. 
And then Pee Wee Jared gets loose and, and moves around a little in the pocket and finds Jacoby Quill in the back of the end zone. Great throw, great catch. Yeah, we really set it up. To, uh, we, we wanted Jacoby to run a flat route uh, and David to run a fade. And I was like, hey, you got to get the ball off quick. And he's like, coach, I will. We'll get it up to Dave. And they literally send three people to Dave. And Dave looked up and saw what they had and told Jacoby, hey, don't run the flat. Go, go run the, the skinny post. And so communicate all that. And sure enough, they all three go to David and Jacoby's sitting there wide open and uh, Pee Wee makes a great throw. Cause I was like, Pee Wee, you're gonna get this off in time. And he's like, yes, he is. I looked up, I mean, I think we caught it with .02. So he did get it off, but it was like, time expired, let's go uh, get out of the half and go from go to, you know, 10-7 to 24-7 within two minutes and 45 seconds. Couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah, less than five minutes left in the half, and it was a 10-7 game, as you just mentioned. It really kind of felt like, hey, it's all still in the balance. And then all of a sudden, you're at 24 points, which was the most that they'd given up this season, kind of matched <laughs> the, the high that they'd given up. And we're at halftime, and you think that was crazy, <laughs> the finish to the first half. It would get even wilder in the second half. Argos up 24-7. We'll take a break here. we come back. We'll dive into the second half on the Coach Shinnick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida, no limits. Can health insurance help cure loneliness? Can it take care of your best friend too? Or hold your hand for nine months? Can it be there for you at 3 a.m.? Or inspire you to go the extra mile? We think so. Which is why every day we ask ourselves, what else can health insurance do? Come find out. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show. 24-7 was our score at half. We're with Coach Pete Shinnick breaking down highlights from a big win over Wingate in the regional final round of the NCAA Division II playoffs. You come out of the locker room, they're going to get the football. They really, and I said on the broadcast, it feels like they really need to score right. here, at least something. And yeah. they get a drive going or start a drive, and then your defense is just kind of like, you know what, the offense was pretty good at the end of the first <laughs> half. Let, let's let's take what Anthony Johnson Jr. did in half number one and crank it up a whole nother notch. Will Breland had a heck of a football game and a nose for the football. He forces a fumble. Kelvin Johnson's got the scoop. Yeah, you, you know, at halftime, I went to the defense. I said, hey, look, you get it back. We're getting ready to wear them out. You know, we had run, I think, 36 plays. Like you said, we had scored as many points against them. We knew if we could get one more score, it would just really compromise what they could do offensively. Uh, they were not a high-scoring offense. They were not a team that has come from behind from big margins. And we were getting them out of their comfort zone. And, you know, the way I envisioned it, and I told the offense, I said, hey, look, we get the ball back. It's time for us to, we're wearing them down, guys. We, you know, we got one long drive in us, and then we'll be able to just go, go, go. Little did I know our <laughs> offense would be on the field for four plays in the third quarter, uh, and we would score 21 points. But that, that strip uh, fumble scoop and score by Kelvin was, you know, just a thing of beauty. And now you're going, oh, my goodness, 31, you know, we're right where we want to be. Yeah, in fact, I was watching the, the linebackers work on that in practice on Friday, yeah. you know, picking up the football, making a move, and what a weird way for Mav Wolfley to get a second reception of the year, but <laughs> we'll just skip over the whole PAT yeah. thing there. Now, they get the football back again, and, and again, you know, now the pressure's really on. They're down 30-7, to seven, and probably not what Shaw Crocker's built to do is to try to throw the football uh, a ton. 
Another interception, another yeah. defensive touchdown, yeah. a pick six, and then this time it's Keon Boyson yep. who slips back into coverage. I don't, I don't think Shaw Crocker saw him. He that. didn't see him at all, no. I think he got lost watching that play over and over. Keon did a great job of kind of getting back and then floating over, made a great catch, uh, and then takes the thing to the house, and you're sitting there going, okay, two in a row. Are you kidding me? Three defensive touchdowns in one game. This is unbelievable. Can't can't believe this is happening, and, and we weren't done yet. Me records are made to be broken or at least tied, and in this case, you, we're gonna get another pick six. The next offensive possession for Wingate, here we go again. Very different this time. This is pressure up the middle, and the ball kind of pops up in yeah. the air, and you've got Cody Lowe right there. And I thought he was down for a second, and all of yep. a sudden he's running again, and it's like, Guys are getting tired. Are they any oxygen on the side? No, no. What, what? You know that another great defensive play, and I know Coach Darian Dillon had to be worn out because he runs up and down. Oh my gosh! No, I, I, you know, and we told our defensive staff never seen anything like that. So just tremendous game plan to get that going. Cody made a great play. Uh, you know, he was trying to get the ball out quick, and it pops up. Cody grabs it, runs through one guy's arm tackle that was on the ground, and then it's just a sea of Argos going into the end zone there, and you're like. Okay, did we just score 28 points on defense? Our offense has scored 17, our defense has scored 28. <laughs> Unbelievable what we just saw and what took place. Blow your mind here because the most points, as I mentioned, Wingate had given up all year was 24. Your yep. defense scored 28 <laughs> against them. Uh, really, your offense is just kind of sitting over there just trying to figure out, hey, we're, we're kind of getting a rest. You know, it's yeah. almost like a half off. No doubt. We we, we actually went for two uh, somewhere in there. That was one of our four plays in the third quarter. It was just like, okay, we haven't been out there. There's, there's like six minutes to go on the clock. It's like, let, let's send the O out there and get them a play so that we can at least do that. Uh, and then, you know, the offense gets one possession in the third quarter um, we get we get a first down on two plays Pee Wee ends up you know getting hit and the ball gets fumbled defense again does another great job holding them out uh, and you know we get the ball back but at that point in time game was really over by the time we got to you know 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter I'd say really only two possessions in the second half you don't really count the last one where you're nope. kneeling it out which is unusual for your right best way to keep this offense off the field is the defense <laughs> let our the defense keep score. scoring so 45 14 ends up being the final score they went on a really long 17 play drive right. when everything was kind of said and done so you get this victory and come out and you know, obviously the celebrations for those who haven't seen it, you know, great, great way to get it in the locker room with the water and, and the song. And, and here you are again, back in the final four for the third time in six seasons. I mean, just right. a fantastic accomplishment. And I know this group has some guys from 19, but there's a lot sure. of new faces and what a feeling for them. No, there's a tremendous amount of new faces. That's probably what you're most, uh, you know, proud of is just keeping the Argo football tradition, but new people doing it. And I think, you know, Third time we've been to this place in the last five seasons. Fourth time we've made the playoffs and you know, getting to this spot now gives us an opportunity, but it's really a new group. But they've caught the vision of what we wanted to do, how we want to run the program, what the program looks like, and now they're putting their spin, their legacy uh, on this thing. And now we got a great opportunity uh, to go to a place we've been before, but to arguably the most um, successful team in Division II uh, in the last four or five years. Well, Coach, one of those new faces we're going to talk to in the next segment. We had one of our students, one of my students, mm -hmm. sit down and spend a little time with your quarterback, Byron oh, there you go. Jarrett, for a little one-on-one -on -one interview. <laughs> That's coming up next, and then Coach will be back with us to break down another Final Four matchup with the <laughs> Ferris State Bulldogs. That's there coming you your way on the Coach Sinek Show. What do you expect from that first job out of college? working your way up from the bottom? Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an Army officer. This isn't just any burger run. This is a burger run for Whataburger Sweet and Spicy Bacon Burger. Two fresh all-beef patties with melty cheese, grilled onions, crispy bacon, and sweet and spicy pepper sauce. One for you, one for him, and one for your unofficial roommate, Brad. Always order an extra. You know, for Brad. The all-time favorite sweet and spicy bacon burger from Whataburger. Just like you like it. 
Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show here at Penn Air Field, where the Argos got a big win last week. And, you know, we like to spend a little time with student athletes here and really kind of have some peer on peer. We've had David Durden talk to some of his teammates this week. One of our students here at the University of West Florida, Cordell Clay, sits down and talks to our quarterback, Myron Pee Wee Jarrett. What was your mentality going into the last game? Uh, it was really just survive, really. Get through the game and, you know, play our best game because, you know, playoffs is win or go home. So you bring your best. And, you know, our best is good enough for anybody. How was the team able to keep its composure when it seemed as if Rhymestone was uh, giving some energy? The fumble into the end zone. You know, they started getting a little bit of energy. Um, the crowd, the opposing crowd got a little bit hype. How did y'all manage to keep it together? Uh, it just our one play at a time. You know, we just come back. Uh, when offense got the ball again, we just, we knew we were going to make a play. Uh, so just really just knowing what we can do and what we're capable of and, you know, all, they're just fans. Fans are going to be fans. Talk about some of the pressures that are taken off of you by having an absolute three-headed monster in the back for us. Yeah, it's just, it's a blessing because, you know, they make second second and short. It's always going to be second and short with them, you know. We tend to run the ball a lot on first down and, you know, they I, I don't see them getting stopped by one person in the backfield. So they're always going forward, and it just makes my job easier, especially if I'm scrambling and just dump it off to them. They're going to make the play. How are you approaching the upcoming game against Delta State? Yeah, uh, just stay level-headed. We know, uh, you know everything is – we lost to them before and kind of, you know, feel like we gave them the game. Um, but just, just going into it, it's just a new game, first game, two new teams. You know, we played them eight, nine weeks ago, so it's two different teams. Uh, just go in the game, focus on the task at hand, and get out with a win. I've actually had the opportunity to be the cameraman for, I think I've done every home game except for two, but I was there for the Delta State game. I know that was the double uh, overtime game. Uh, I know it's the playoffs, so you have to approach it. Uh, every game I guess your last and give 110% every snap, of course. Uh, but would you say that y'all are extra motivated or determined to get back at these guys after the tough loss in the void? For sure. Uh, definitely uh, get back for sure. Yeah. Uh, that's you know that's all on our mind. But we know if we go out there and play our best game, nobody nobody can play with us. Favorite three artists that you have on your rotation before the game? I gotta hear. It. Uh, definitely, Baby Tron. Baby Tron. Baby Tron. Uh, say NBA Young Boy for sure. And uh, my third. My third, probably Rio. It's probably Rio. my third, yeah. My top three right there. So what is your actual go-to motivational song or just turn song? If you had to pick one, what would you be there or down the one? Uh, for each game. Probably Last Day Out by Rio. Last Day Out. Yeah, just get me going for sure. So I saw that you're from Iowa. Yeah. So talk about the change of being from Iowa and then obviously I mean you're in Florida now, what, was, what has the adjustment been like weather-wise, yeah. culture-wise or whatever, whatever. Yeah, so the biggest thing uh, weather-wise is, is hot, yeah. you know, so I'm, I'm used to hot. I mean, this is kind of my weather right here and I know this is probably the coldest it, it kind of gets down here, but uh, you know, back home it's snowing and you know, 10, 15 degrees. So it's, it's, it's an upgrade, you know, playing in this, but then culture-wise, just for football, uh, coming from junior college, you know, you don't get a lot of stick around a lot of guys who've been in the program for four or five years. So just coming in and learning the culture and, you know, being a younger new guy, I'm, I'm a new guy here. So I'm just trying to play my role and, you know, do what's best for the team. Thank you, Cordell and Pee Wee, for letting us have a little bit of your time this week. Coming up next on the program, time to talk basketball with our men's and women's programs on the Coach Shinnick Show. Need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breaking orthopedic care is more than top-rated quality scores, more than leading-edge treatment options, more than world-class care close to home. It's all that and more. Andrews Institute, 
groundbreaking care. Welcome back to the Coach Sinek Show. Our winter sports continue to heat up as we close out the fall semester. UWF men's basketball had a one-game week last week, and it was a tough 69-62 loss at West Georgia. Junior Latrell Tate led the way with 25 points. The Argos are now 4-4 and on the season. They'll play a pair of conference games this weekend, hosting Union and Christian Brothers on Friday and Sunday. We caught up with Coach Jeff Burkhammer to talk about those matchups. Well, I thought a few things with West Georgia. We didn't play poorly. Uh, we just didn't play well enough to win. We missed a lot of open shots. We showed those guys on tape all the open shots we got. We just didn't make them. And we had good shooters shooting them. They just didn't go in that day. And there are shots we want them to take, uh, shots we'll continue to take. We just got to make some of those shots. And then we got to do a little bit better job of finishing possessions defensively and not allowing uh, second shots or uh, late shot clock drives to the basket and finishes, that type of thing. So not far away. You know, we played right now the number one team in the league on the road. Uh, it's a two-possession game with a minute and a half to go. We were right there and really didn't play a great game, just played well enough to be in it. But if we play well and we make some shots, we find a way to win that game. And that's kind of what we've got to get to. We've got to get to where we're winning some of those games like that. And that's a big thing we've talked to our team about. We've got three GSC games at home before Christmas, this is a, a, an important stretch for us. We got to find ways to win some home games here, and get us back in the mix. Uh, we've given away a couple games. We've we've lost to a couple of good teams, and now we're back home and, and, and playing better. And uh, hopefully, we'll continue to get better and better uh, over the course of the season. But these are this is an important stretch. These next two weeks before Christmas for us to to make some headway in the GSC. The women's team played two road games last week, dropping a 77-74 heartbreaker at Columbus State. They then got a big Gulf South Conference win with a 77-49 whipping of West Georgia. Sophomore Zoe Pillar led the way with 26-24 in the two games, and she earns the GSC Player of the Week award. The Argos will play two at home this weekend. Coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton breaks down what was and what will be. I thought we, you know, had a really good road trip this past week. Um, although we lost at Columbus State by three, I thought we played well enough to win. We won a lot of the statistical categories and just didn't win the school board. Um, and I think our team knew that. You know, we kept ourselves in the fight. We were down, uh, you know, 15 seconds into the game by five points and uh, were able to fight our way back to get a last second three. Uh, that just didn't fall to tie the game to go into overtime. Um, so the fight and the drive were there. We just didn't win that scoreboard. And then we would go to West Georgia, and I thought we played um, a pretty sloppy first half. But kudos to our team for kind of regrouping uh, at the halftime mark and then coming out and really exploding in that third quarter. And that was really the difference in the game. Um, we played a great third quarter, and then we're able to sustain that through the end of the game. But wins this time of year don't come easy, especially in conference play. And so um, happy to get those road wins and then get back here on our home court. Super excited to be back home for uh, a two-game swing um, before we head into Christmas break. You know, Union coming in and the top five in the country is going to be a super big challenge for us. Um, but I think we're ready. You know, I think we are excited about the game coming up. Um, of course, Christian Brothers coming here uh, on the back end of that two-game swing. Um, again, a team that is competing and uh, fighting and trying to fight their way up the ladder in the GSC. So two hugely important games. Um, right here at the end and you know we're excited to kind of be in the hunt for those that's a look at uwf basketball for this week we're not done yet though we'll preview the football final four matchup with ferris state that's next on the coach shinnick show what do you expect from that first job out of college working your way up from the bottom Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an Army officer. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. 
Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. Welcome back in. It's our final segment of the Coach Sinek Show. Coach is back with us. Let's break down a Final Four matchup. Uh, a reminiscent trip to 2019. We went up to Big Rapids, Michigan. You guys beat Ferris State back then, 28-14. to Heck of a football game. Great team. I mean, our success that we talked about earlier in the show kind of somewhat mirrored in their success that they've had up there the last couple seasons. Yeah, they, they don't lose many football games, um, and they have found a way to be one of the top D2 football programs uh, in the country. Uh, when you watch them on film, you know why. Uh, extremely talented on both sides of the ball. Uh, maybe as impressive of a defense as you'll see from a link standpoint uh, and from a speed standpoint. And so there's a reason they're holding opponents uh, to you, you know small amounts. Uh, Wingate was a very, very good defense, but nothing like uh, what this group looks like. Uh, Wingate's productivity and numbers are probably similar, but this group just is big and long and athletic, create tremendous problems in the run game, and then their length in the passing game give you issues. And then offensively, they've just got weapons everywhere, and they're, you're gonna see multiple people playing multiple positions, doing all kinds of things. And so, you know, it's trying to keep track of who's where and what they're doing, it really becomes, hey, this formation really should be when these two numbers are here and this and that, because they're all over the place and, and they're doing every kind of scheme known to mankind. Fair State, the defending national champ, so this will be the last two champs meeting up, and they had two incredible football games with Grand Valley, including their regional final last week, as we look at some highlights of that, and they really do mix it up. They're, they're balanced on offense, mm -hmm. about 200 yards a game rushing and throwing. Yep. Like what you said, four different quarterbacks, yeah, they, but like they that. have a throwing quarterback, a running quarterback. Oh, yeah. And he's got 25 touchdowns, their, their big running oh, yeah. quarterback. No, he's he's been fantastic. And I mean, he'll he'll keep you honest because they got a throwing quarterback who runs and they got a running quarterback who throws. So it isn't <laughs> like they, you know, have this set rule as to who does what. They kind of do it all. And uh, I mean, his productivity from a touchdown standpoint is outstanding. Carson Golker is his name. Myleek Mitchell's the other quarterback, and they'll spread it around with guys who really kind of play positionless. They're, they're receivers, but they're also running backs, sure. and got, a lot of guys will touch the football. Defensively, they've got a guy named Caleb Murphy who's got a, a Division II record, 24 and a half sacks this right. year, and then tackles for loss are off the charts, too. And you were saying to me before we started taping, you got to know where he is and oh, you yeah. got to account for him. Yeah, you really do. I mean, he is definitely that type of player that if you go, I mean, you're always going to go, okay, where is he lined up? A lot of times he lines up to the field, but they put him in different spots. Uh, so, but you need to know uh, who he's going against and what's what's happening and what type of play you have called based on where he's at because uh, he is that type of presence and he is that type of force. How much does it help to have, as we talked about earlier in the show, you do have a couple guys that were here in 19 still, but a lot of new faces, but to be going back somewhere where you played in 19, sure. the same round, and had success. Yeah, I think those guys will be able to give a little bit of that experience. Uh, but again, this is this is really a brand new team, uh, and it's really a brand new crew to kind of take up there. So we got to talk about the logistics of it, what it looks like. Uh, you know, for some guys, this might be the first time they're on a plane. Uh, you know, because we haven't done that yet. So there's a lot of firsts that'll probably take place. Uh, we've got a pretty good schedule that we used last time we were there. We'll continue with that uh, up there this time. And uh, you know, it's really each guy trying to figure out what it looks like but playing at their place it's a unique environment and uh, they do some things a little differently so we'll prep our guys for that and be ready for it here's the fun thing though they got a lot of Florida guys on their team mm -hmm. I mean obviously they've played up there in the cold probably a little longer but your quarterbacks from Iowa sure you got a tight end who's from West Virginia you got running <laughs> back from Ohio guys in, in different spots that they got some experience with cold weather oh yeah I'm not worried about that and it's not it's, I don't think it's gonna be this freezing game uh, you know their first round against uh, Davenport was uh, you know an interesting one Supposed to be in the 40s, uh, you know, it, it, it's a balmy 75 degrees right now. And so, you know, I, I don't know that we could prepare ourselves the way we need to, but 
we'll figure it out. And uh, I'm, I'm confident we go up there. It's a, you know, it's an afternoon game. Last time we went up, it was an evening game, which I thought was a little different and, you know, had to prepare a little differently. But, you know, I, I feel like we're in good shape this time. Not quite sure we could take the HLS, uh, you know, the student workout <laughs> center here and get a room in there and drop the temperature down yeah. that cold. But, you know, we're looking forward to it. It'll be an 11 o'clock kick again here, Central Time in Pensacola, 12 Eastern Time. Game is on ESPN. Yep. So it'll be the final in the final four. They do that. So you can yep. watch it there. And we'll be on the radio with the ESPN Pensacola starting at 1030 local time with the pregame show. Coach, good luck this week. Thank Safe you. travels. We're all heading up to Michigan. And that, this means we will see you next week for another edition of the Coach Shinnick Show. Don't forget, GoArgos.com for all your latest news and notes. And the Argo Armada app will keep you updated as well. And we'll talk to you next time on the Coach Shinnick Show.